Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a solo playthrough for Goblin Vault. This is from Thunderworks Games. It is for one to five players. Imagine you are goblins in the famed Ku Black Prison uh, in the role player universe. In the deep dark corners, a card game ensues. You will have a hand of cards, and every round you are going to bid for cards that are into a central tableau. You will acquire some cards and build your own personal empire based on scoring conditions. You're also trying to get these gears, which are the currency of the prison. Over the course of nine rounds, whoever has the best tableau will win the game. This one has aspects, as I said, of bidding, also set collecting, and a dash of trick taking. This video will focus exclusively on the solo play for Goblin Vaults. Many of your favorite video creators leave you to explore the solo modes of your favorite games on your own. Not here on the One Stop Co-op Shop. We love solo. We are going to indulge our favorite solo modes and show them off to you. If you want to get to know the multiplayer rules of the game, I recommend Dan King, the Game Boy Geeks, Rule School video, which I will link in the show notes. The solo mode does have bidding, does have the set collection. Many of the aspects of the multiplayer are here, but ends up feeling like a classic solitaire style game that I'm happy to bring to you. But before we get to all that, let's talk about the One Stop Co-op Shop. You're on the YouTube channel. We have our YouTube stream channel. Please subscribe to both of those channels and like the videos that you enjoy. We have our podcast, hundreds of episodes of Gaming Focus content at this point on your favorite podcast platforms. We have our Discord, which is a great community, always active, talking about new and old, complex and simple, the whole range of Soul and Cooperative. If you want to join us, it is completely free. Check the link for the Discord in the show notes below. We have our Patreon, which helps us keep the tech upgraded and the games in front of the table. In exchange for your monthly contribution, you get exclusive access to videos and tiers in the Discord. Please consider a contribution. But if you just want to be part of our community and get updates and see what we're all about in the One Stop Co-op Shop, once again, it is free to join the Discord. We are the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. The main deck of Goblin Vault is consisted of groups of cards numbered 1 to 10 in each uh, individual suit. The game comes with six suits. Uh, in a solo game, you play with four. In this game, I'm going to play with the books, 1 through 10, crown, 1 to 10. I think that's a birdcage. We'll go with that, <laughs> 1 through 10. And coin, 1 to 10. Uh, these two suits will be set aside for this game. Every round, players are going to use uh, one card from their hand in order to bid on cards that are in what the game calls the block. So uh, there are a lot of little rules uh, to note, and I'll go into those in a little bit. But in terms of the overall game flow, uh, the bot is going to make a bid. And it makes a bid pretty blind. It just said does what the card says. And so uh, it would bid on this one and put a faction marker down. And then I can decide that I want to make a bid. And so I am going to uh, go ahead and put them wherever I want, put my faction marker down. And then the bot is going to do that one more time. And then all players will acquire those cards. So then the bot will take these two cards. I will take this card into my vault, my scoring area. And then these cards we put in the block to uh, be available next round. That is the overall game flow, what you're going to be doing from turn to turn. By the end of the game, your vault is going to look something like this. Ten cards maximum in your vault over the course of nine rounds of play. And so the scoring is the key. Once you understand the scoring, you'll understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And there are three main ways to score. First of all, position matters. As you can see the symbols over here, this indicates the point scored for position in my vault. So if this card were in tier one, which is here, you would score a point uh, in the middle right there. Uh, that would be tier two, two points and tier three, three points. Along the way, you'll acquire some gear tokens. You'll score a point for every one of those you acquire along the course of the game. And finally, here are the modular goals. This was what a large part of what creates the variability in this game, because there are a ton. We have the scoring card here, and it is double-sided, and lots more cards available that are both double-sided. Uh, I am playing with what the game uh, refers to as the basic cards, the Tome Library, and Gimnax's Reign, as well as this cluster card, which you'll play with, or a version of this, either cluster or collection, every game. These set variable conditions on how things score. So in this particular place, score each chamber uh, that is a sequence of ascending or descending numbers, 345 or 543. 
uh, score for green cards in the Tome Library, and also score for if you have a chamber that has the highest value of a crown card. Like I said, variability there, but a lot of your points are going to come from these scoring conditions. In the solo game, you will pick a faction that will determine which faction scores for you, depending on what card you acquire. And uh, in the solo game, you are going to play against two of the factions. Players will get dealt a hand of 10 cards, and they'll play one into their vault to begin the game. The bot will begin with a hand of 18 cards to represent nine rounds of play. The first action of any turn is to pull one card from the bot deck, consult the bottom right, and place it under the blo uh, corresponding block card, and that represents the first bid of the game. The bot gets two, one before and one after. Now it is my turn, and I have a couple of options. First, these are open, uh, and there will always be two open cards for you to bid for. So then I could just take any card. It uh, does not have to match or exceed the block card. It just has to be any card and place my own bid on there. I have two other options for my turn. First of all, if I really wanted this card for whatever reason, it comboed with what I got scoring-wise, I would take one of my cards. It does not matter the suit. As long as it's higher than the bid that is placed over here, then I would be beating this bid, and that would be put me in the lead there. I also have the opportunity to underbid. So let's say that I wanted this particular card. Uh, in general, you're acquiring cards from the block, but every once in a while, you have a card in hand that's like, ooh, that's really great for my scoring matrix. So I can intentionally underbid right there. Uh, in exchange for that, then I would have to put a gear card, one of my gear tokens on the winning bid. So generally, that is a suboptimal move. However, this could be such a good card, sometimes it is worth it. And so to review, generally uh, three possible outcomes. One, either you bid for a fresh card. Two, you outbid the existing bid from the bot or underbid and try to acquire the card that you played. At that point, the bot gets another bid with its second faction token. You would consult the bottom once again, and that would be its last bid of the turn. It is possible for the bot to come in and foil your plans. Let's say I had tried to beat this bid with an eight and the bot plays a nine. Well, then the bot gets the hand and I get that card back. You might be wondering what this card is hanging out over here. That is the Trump suit. So uh, if I wanted to make sure that I got a card or make sure that the bot did not bid me for something, then I would have that trump suit available to me. I would place that over here and do that. That would be a winning bid. If I had bid a number under there, even a one, the trump suit beats this bid and that would put me in the lead to acquire this card. And that is not all that could happen. Sometimes I can play a card where the faction suit matches uh, the Warden suit. So if I did that, then I would be able to take an optional Warden action. Uh, this is a way to manipulate your own game state. You can either take one of your cards that you're not happy with and put it on the bottom of the deck and draw a new card, or you can make changes in your personal tableau. Let's say you weren't happy with the uh, positioning of a card, so like this 10, uh, scores more points if it is in tier three with a warden action. I could put it down here and now I will get the benefit of that scoring. Once the bidding has been complete for the turn, then we can resolve any card that was not bid on gets a token that is available uh, to acquire in a future turn. But uh, in the case where one person bid, then they will just get the card and put it in their vault. And that card that was bid with now becomes part of the block. The winning bid would acquire, would move up and acquire that card. In this case, the solo bot would acquire that into their discard pile for scoring. And then they would take back their faction marker. This gear and any gear that was placed on the winning bid card stays there to acquire in the turn. And then the any other bids, uh, once that's all resolved, would go back to their owners. In the solo bot's case, it would go to their scoring pile. And oh yeah, there is one more thing that happens at the very, very end of the round before the next round. The solo player has a chance every single round to swap the Warden card slash Trump card uh, with any card in the block. So then I could put that here. Let's say I wanted to acquire that card or it comboed well with what else I have in my hand. So that would be lots of reasons to put the new Warden card in here. In multiplayer, that rotate, the first player will be doing that. In solo, you'll have that option every round. You do that for nine rounds, you consult those four scoring conditions, and that is a full game of Goblin Vaults.
All right, so let us get going with a game of Goblin Vault solo mode. I have dealt myself 10 cards, uh, three gear tokens to start, and I have my faction card, which is yellow. That's the marker I'm going to use. They have a blue, oh, not blue, a green and red, a hammer and snake. Uh, they're two faction cards. They have a deck of 18 cards and 10. So it's basically a lead of 10 points or a start, a jumping off point of 10 points. All right, so let's go ahead and play. Oh, actually, before I even do that, it doesn't even matter that you saw it. <laughs> I have to set myself up. My first card goes in the vault. That's pretty easy. Uh, this is a tier one card. Uh, it is a 10, so it will definitely satisfy Gymnax's reign. Score each chamber, uh, vertical column, in which the highest value card is a crown card. That is just automatic, uh, is going to happen at least for one. Uh, and also, I get to set up a run of like nine and there's a an eight. Uh, so then that there's a lot of possibility for that there. Uh, Tome Library is score each chamber, vertical column, with at least two of these cards. Five points per chamber with uh, two of those, uh, nine points per chamber with three. Uh, and the reason I pointed out that 10, 9, 8 is cluster. Score each chamber, vertical column, with three cards whose values form a sequence and up or down. So this is a cool card. It's kind of a shoot the moon aspect. Uh, possibly you get 27 points, but it's really hard uh, to get all those either ascending or descending numbers. Suit does not matter. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and push that off to the side a little bit. Make room for the opening bid. So that is going to be that three uh, right there. And I might want to take that away from the bot because that's their faction symbol. They're going to score three points per faction symbol in normal mode, which is what I am playing. It would also... Give me some good stuff going. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, the trump suit is this crown over there. Uh, so any of my cards will uh, work for that purpose. And let's go ahead, uh, come strong or don't come at all. I'm going to go ahead and bid my nine. Uh, and that will trump this card. And then uh, the bot is going to just bid on this one and receive it. So the bot takes their three and tucks their tail behind their legs and the six. Let's move that up. I take the three and let's just put that here for now. I might have to shift that over uh, in a little bit. We're going to put that right there. Anything uh, without any bid or any column without a bid will get a token, making that a little bit more attractive for next turn. If I want to, oh. Um, Sure, I want to. I have a few more uh, coins, and that would turn these coins into the Trump suit if I switch this two and this two. But let's hold off a second. Let's empty my hand of these uh, crowns before I switch the Trump suit next turn. And that's it. That is a full round and no uh, messy setup uh, in terms of going into the next round. You just dive right in. All right, so we have a two that is in the middle. I'll put if I, oh, gotta clean those off. Sorry about that. Got to clean, uh, put the faction token right there. That is an attractive card because that is a faction symbol. Hmm. But instead, um, I committed to this last turn. I'm going to go ahead and bid on this one to try to create that 10, 9, 8. Uh, and also the tier 2 card. There's a lot of good that is happening there. And then they are going to outbid themselves. Uh, and go ahead and put that 5 down here. Uh, so the this card is going to receive one of its own tokens. They are, uh, just to make it official right there, uh, they are going to receive this card, and they're going to get this card back. Nope, actually, you, you know what? I am wrong. <laughs> uh, this th doesn't get, get into play because they beat their own bid, so don't even worry about that. They're just going to get this card back. That's Sorry about that. Uh, just a little bit of wonkiness. Um, in terms of the token management, but I hope that, that that all gets smoothed out as I go. So let's go, we are working on 10, 9, 8, and we have another gear right there. Move these to the side, get that off camera, you don't need to be there. Move that uh, right there, and let's go ahead and get another card, a seven, that is going to be uh, on the left-hand side as you are looking on the screen. Uh, token, and they're going for those two. And they have the Trump suit. And I didn't uh, change the Trump suit. So I could not, even if I wanted to. Wow. That was that's a really strategic error because they get a faction symbol and two tokens out of that. 
Sorry, guys. Let me see if I have any of my own faction symbols that I can play into the card. Yes, I do. Um, if, uh, actually, that would be the last uh, Trump suit. I would definitely change it next turn. But change it to what? It would have to only be this card. Sure, why not? I'll roll the dice. Uh, <laughs> never mind. What? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait. Actually, that's not so bad. Uh, sometimes uh, what you want to do uh, is you want to play a card that you either want to win with or you wouldn't mind getting if you lost. Uh, so I kind of uh, stumbled my way into that, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take that back. That's fine. Uh, that goes here. Uh, and, uh, actually, you know what, I'm, it's, it's going to start a column. So this is a tier one card. Uh, I may eventually move over here because even tied, this would be the highest card and satisfy the Gymnax rain condition. So yeah, that's, that's totally fine with me. Uh, so that is the bid and they are going to get two tokens. I'm not too happy about that. And there is no point, no point in shifting over the warden card unless I wanted to, uh, get a different symbol for the ward, uh, ward in action, but I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. Uh, and we have a token for there. Let's go ahead and get those cards splayed a little bit on the camera and continue our game. We have on the right hand side a weak showing. You must not want that card that bad. And I must not want this card that bad either. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and go for that eight. All right, let's see what the bot does. Uh, they are going to outbid themselves. Uh, so that, uh, that goes right there. They like the idea of getting this one card back and also the seven. That, ugh. Uh, they're, really, they're actually getting a lot of more faction symbols than I really that I want them to. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that eight and make the vertical column. Do I want to make the vertical column? Let's make the vertical column. Uh, at 10, 9, 8, that is the cluster. Uh, so that is going to uh, be okay. And then another gear gets added right there. Fast turns. This is a fast game. I only have uh, four turns or five turns left. Uh, and, you know, five turns, five over here. We're going to have five by the end. All right, so now we're going to do it. Now we are going to switch the trump card uh, into those valuable coins uh, so that I have a nice fresh set of trump suit. All right, so let's go ahead and play. They are going to do uh, the column three with a very, very strong play uh, for these two. Do I want them to have this? Absolutely not. So you're going to get this eight. Sure, uh, because I really want to make sure you only have one chance <laughs> to beat that. Uh, so let's just make that official. Uh, when you're playing your game, you could probably fly through and not use the faction markers. I'm just using them for the visual purpose of the uh, playthrough. I apologize if I skip uh, doing it uh, every now and again. So let's go ahead and put that there. They're going to get the former trump card or the former warden card, and they are going to get this card back. And I'm going to claim for my first two gears of the playthrough, and this is a six which does a couple of things. Uh, it is a tier one card, and it will also fulfill Gymnax's um, reign, and it denies the faction suit. So I'm very, very happy about all that. And we get one token right there. All right, so down to the last four. Uh, they are gonna bid on the number one. Okay, that's not so harmful because I was planning on doing this. Now, what card do I want to use in order to bid on this? Uh, fits perfectly right here. Open up three, two, one, maintain Gymnax's reign here. Hmm. All right, let's go uh, split the difference. Let's go with my second biggest. I hope I don't regret that. <laughs> if I really wanted it, I would use that 10. That would be an automatic get. Is that card that good? Mm, I don't know. Uh, okay, they are going to play in column one anyway. A very strong card. Uh, but I uh, would not have uh, gotten my trump. Uh, so they acquire this card uh, and this card. So that gets flipped up there. I get to claim that. Ooh, another gear. Fantastic. And put that there and a gear over at this eight. Three turns left in the game. Let's see. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bid on that number one. Oh, a faction symbol. I have been delinquent, and it's a 10, uh, to, and it's a middle. Hoo-hoo! 
uh, I am probably going to go for that. Uh, and I, that's, that's exactly why I saved that Trump suit. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. That is for a moi. I haven't seen a lot of underbidding this game. Uh, I don't know what the, what's going on with all that. Well, I, speak of the devil. <laughs> and they could not have underbid any more than that. So they are going to take one of their own uh, uh, gears and put that on the winning bid. And they're going to reclaim these two cards, these feeble attempts uh, at uh, whatever they were trying to do. And so I am going to take this 10 with glee and put that in there. And that is going to satisfy Tome Library. So that is a five-pointer right there. I will absolutely take that and take these markers back. I get two more shots at some more points. At this point, I would change the Trump suit because I've used all my coins, but I can't change it anything. It is what it is. All right, so let's go ahead and play that seven uh, down to the left. And it is a dragon, but that doesn't matter for now. Are there any dragons out here? No. Uh, so should I put just like a weak sauce bid right there? Uh, hmm, let's see. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take the warden action. So this is kind of a weak card. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that there. That symbol matches that up there. So let's go ahead and put that on the bottom of the deck and get another card. Not that much of an improvement, but better than what I had. And I would be able to switch one of these cards into it and make it the Trump, so it'll be even better. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that there. What are you going to do? It's just a straight up turn. So let's go ahead and take these two, put them here. I get that one. Oh, I'm actually doing pretty good on tokens this turn. Uh, and I get this eight. Let me put it over here. Uh, sure. Uh, it's a tier three. Uh, that's worth a decent amount, number of points. Last round, fight! Got that one. Horrendous. <laughs> but way to go out with a whimper. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, ooh, wait a minute. Sorry about that. Rewind. Uh, and so I had declared people that I was going to do this. So uh, I was going to uh, change that to the Trump suit. So sorry about that. It's a solo game. Who's watching? <laughs> you could do anything you want. And this happens to be a card that I want because... Of that symbol. That symbol is really good. However, ooh, something oh, a lot to think about. So the faction symbol would be beneficial. Uh, but if I put it to either of these two, then I would break the points on Gymnax's reign. So the faction symbol is worth two. Uh, the Gymnax would be worth three. So that's not any good at all. Hmm. So the only thing that wouldn't break the Gymnax is here. And this is at least a, a, a two token. Uh, you know what? Let's just do that. So, uh, I, as, as attractive as you are, I don't think I'm going to be able to service you. I'll put that there. Uh, this one, they uh, do they outbid themselves? Yes. Uh, so, they are just going to take that and that. i put that here. I am going to take this and put that there. And that is a full game of Goblin Vaults. So, final score time. I was able to beat the bot 50 to 40. So that was on medium. That was with the simplest uh, scoring conditions. So they were pretty easy to figure out. Uh, and uh, I was able to deny the bot some faction symbols. So my first couple of games that I played this, I didn't quite get that. And I was getting creamed by the bot. Once I figured out that I have to do a little bit to kind of block the bot from getting stuff, I was able to kind of mitigate that. I've seen this be like, you know, 35. <laughs> this is something egregious. Uh, so I was able to win, but there's plenty of room to, you know, amp up difficulty, change your scoring conditions, uh, and just, you know, explore the game, have a lot of fun. Easy, breezy, classic feeling card game with, you know, kind of a, a next level graduated set of mechanisms with the bidding and the warden suits and all that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so if you like the look of this solo, and you want to explore multiplayer, there's plenty of other videos out there for multiplayer. Uh, but this is inexpensive, cheap, uh, available from Thunderworks Games. I really enjoyed my playthrough. This is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop, reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.